All right, Jen, you're up. Okay, uh, am I muted? Let me see. Okay, I'm I'm not. Well, buddy, yeah, to good. the next of funeral history. I'm so honored uh, to be uh, your feature business this month. Of course, Halloween and October, and the National Museum of Funeral History is kind of like uh, it all just meshes together and works well. Um, so we're really excited to be here and be a part of this, um, but we've got fabulous exhibits. If you've never been to the National Museum of Funeral History, this definitely has to be on your bucket list. Um, we, we're trying really hard to, to stop being the best kept secret in Houston. So hopefully you all will come out and enjoy the museum. Um, but I lo I'm looking forward to sharing with you just a couple of the exhibits. We have 15 permanent exhibits here at the National Museum of Funeral History. Unfortunately, I only had enough time to showcase two. So, uh, Look forward to sharing them with you uh, and look forward to sharing the amazing gift shop with you all uh, and some of the door prizes we have um, and hope you enjoyed some of those trivia questions. I'd like to thank Tammy Wallace and the LGBT Chamber of Commerce for welcoming the National Museum of Funeral History to your virtual event. I look forward to sharing this museum with everybody. Thank you, Monica Marine, for making this happen. So welcome to the National Museum of Funeral History and let's get the tour started. You're currently in our presidential exhibit. This exhibit features every president going all the way back to George Washington, all the way up to our most recently deceased president, George H.W. Bush. Um, here we have fascinating artifacts from all of the presidents who have died to date. Uh, we have an amazing hearse that actually carried the bodies of both President Ronald Reagan and Gerald R. Ford. We have an amazing beer that we feature here on display. And this beer actually is a continuing working artifact. So when a first lady dies or a president dies, this piece actually will come out of the exhibit and go to the resting place or the church or the funeral of the first lady or the president. So that's a fun piece to kind of see how it evolves and continues to create history here for the National Museum of Funeral History. So as we go on, I wanna show you and highlight some of our exhibits and some of our presidents here in this specific exhibit. This is the most recent um, exhibit that uh, Grant opened this year uh, in 2020. Uh, when the funeral of President George H.W. Bush was actually conducted right here in our city. Um, many of you may have been able to be witness of the train as it actually left uh, Houston to go all the way to College Station. So as you can see here, we have a really nice diagram of the actual train and the actual stops it made all the way up until uh, they reached College Station. You can watch a video and actually see a replica of the train that carried our president. Um, wonderful artifacts are housed within this exhibition. Uh, actual artifacts that were worn by the chaplain uh, and the priest that actually uh, presided over his funeral service. Um, beautiful artifacts here in this exhibit. Uh, takes you back in time for a, a very moving event that touched all of us Houstonians here. Uh, one of our other presidents that are featured quite uh, extensively here in the uh, presidential exhibit uh, is President Gerald R. Ford. Uh, Gerald R. Ford uh, was uh, presided over by our chairman here at the National Museum of Funeral History. He is the funeral director to the presidents. And with that amazing working relationship, we've been able to get great artifacts here at the museum. We actually have the cannon shell uh, cases for the cannons that were fired uh, every time Air Force One ascended and descended uh, with the president, uh, with the body of President Gerald R. Ford. Um, each one of these cannon shells were cleaned, put into a shadow box, and sent to all guests, family members, and friends upon the request of Mrs. Ford. It was quite an extensive project that it was an honor to be part of. Uh, here we actually have the wreath that was actually laid uh, outside the library. Um, at the Gerald R. Ford Library. 
And as you can see, we have um, many other artifacts here that are designated just for President Gerald R. Ford. This is the actual uniform uh, that Albie Powell actually wore while he sung at his funeral. And then this is the uniform of General Swan, and he actually was the escort to Mrs. Ford. Uh, so we, we, were, we were truly, truly honored to be able to house these artifacts here at the National Museum of Imperial History to showcase a very Next moving uh, funeral procession of a president in our time. Members of the deceased. Our president exhibit continues. It's very vast. There's a lot to see. Um, some of the older presidents, we have the newspapers. Uh, back in the day when we were communicating that the president had passed away, it was front newspaper. And so we have a lot of newspaper clippings here on display of the presidents um, who have passed away in, in, in the more historical time periods. Now it's all in the news, it's on our social media. So it's really neat to see even how the word gets out. Abraham Lincoln has the most real estate here in the presidential exhibit. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was our first president to ever have a presidential funeral. So rightfully so, he lays here in repose, uh, a replica uh, of his coffin. Um, and we also have a death mask to show uh, where Abraham Lincoln was shot. We actually have a replica of the gun that was used to kill him. Uh, and we have some excerpts from a diary of a young girl who uh, remembers uh, hearing the announcement that Abraham Lincoln had been shot uh, and how the townspeople had all come together uh, when hearing this drastic news. Um, here we have a replica of Abraham Lincoln's train. Uh, this train, I love to tell everybody that this is Air Force One back in the day. This train was actually built uh, for Abraham Lincoln uh, to go around and, and, and uh, be able to get involved with communities. And this was his transportation back then. Unfortunately, he never did get to use this transportation uh, uh, prior to him being assassinated. So it became his funeral train. He did not uh, ride this train alone. And this is a fun trivia question. I always like to ask uh, visitors when they come in, uh, who rode the train with Abraham Lincoln? The answer is his son, Willie. His son, Willie, preceded him in death by three years. And it was upon the request of, of his wife that he be exhumed and his body accompany his father on the train ride and his funeral procession that lasted over nine days. Here in the presidential exhibit, we have the replicas of the caskets from President Ronald Reagan and John F. Kennedy. These are actual Marcellus pieces. Uh, we have a Marcellus exhibit here at the National Museum of Funeral History. Marcellus is one of the finest crafted wood caskets uh, historically. Uh, they did sell out to Batesville, so now you can get what they call a uh, Marcellus by Batesville. If you're able to get your hands on an actual Marcellus casket, it'll probably run you about $100,000. Uh, so if you're in the market for one. <laughs> uh, but these are Marcellus pieces here, Ronald Reagan and JFK. And then we also have the Eternal Flame here uh, from JFK's um, actual burial site from Arlington National Cemetery. When they switch it out for a more modern day model, they donated this one to the National Museum of Funeral History with our wonderful working relationship with Arlington National Cemetery. Of course, we had to convert it to electric. It actually ran on gas. Um, and so you can still get the ambiance of what the flame looked like. Uh, and the flame, the eternal flame still burns at JFK's burial site at Arlington National Cemetery. If you ever get an opportunity to go visit, it's a wonderful place to see. We talked about every president is featured here in, in the presidential exhibit, going all the way back to George Washington. George Washington being our first president of the United States. Here we have his eulogy on display, as well as his funeral bill. And I always find it so fascinating to show people how much his funeral actually costs. So his funeral costs a whopping $100 and $11. So it's, it's pretty, pretty cool uh, to see um, how the times have changed and how the costs of a funeral changed. Um, and it actually talks about line by line uh, what each item was, 
was paid for. So, uh, and we still do that today. We still itemize the bill. So it's pretty fun and fascinating to see that for myself, especially as a funeral director, uh, to see how they uh, carry on that tradition even today of itemizing the bill. So. We have on display the actual embalming machine that was used on President Harry S. Truman. We really have some fascinating artifacts here at the National Museum of Funeral History. Um, so obviously it's, it's, it's pretty fitting to have the embalming machine that actually embalmed the president. Um, once they, uh, when the embalming process was complete, they actually took this embalming machine out of operation and made it an artifact for the museum. All right, you're on. You're on mute, Genevieve. There we go. Let's unmute you here. Unmute. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I've been answering questions in the chat room. So. Yeah, and so, while we're flipping over to the next one, if anybody has any questions for Genevieve, she's here to answer. Uh, one of the questions was, "How much is the adult admissions?" And I was in the process of typing it in the chat room. Uh, so the admissions are ten dollars for adults. Um, nine dollars for veterans and seniors uh, and eight dollars for the group rate and seven dollars for children and we are open seven days a week and yes we're open on halloween in case you didn't read the chat and kids 12 and under will get in free if they come in in costume and we have safe trick-or-treat candy to hand out and Jennifer, on the um, uh, the uh, hearse from the 1800s, which president was that? Uh, it wasn't the president. It's not a presidential hearse. This is just a horse-drawn hearse. Uh, the oldest. The okay. oldest. Uh, very good. Yeah. That's the yeah. in the museum. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Love it. Genevieve, do you want to tee up the next video, what we're going to see? Uh, yes, yeah, so the next video, we're going to go into International Hall and show you some of the customs and traditions from different parts of the world. So these are fun, fascinating coffins. And these are actually from Ghana, West Africa. And Kane Kwe is the artist who began crafting these amazing pieces. There are several different styles here. We have the largest collection of Ghana coffins outside of Ghana, West Africa, and they actually still do make them today. Uh, Kanye has uh, taught many people how to craft these amazing pieces of art. Uh, the majority of the coffins are either representative of what the person did in life or what they hope to achieve in the afterlife. So here we have a shallot onion. If the woman was a shallot farmer um, and that was her life's work, uh, then rightfully so, so she would be buried in a shallot onion. And uh, these actually are pieces that go into the ground. I get that question a lot. People always say, are these buried? Yes, they are. Uh, but they're not allowed to go into a church because they're considered sacrilegious. So if you are going to choose one of the fantasy coffins, then you will have it mainly, you'll have a funeral in the courtyard uh, of your village. Um, and then they'll carry you off to the cemetery. Um, but again, these are not allowed in the churches uh, over there in West Africa. Um, a boat motor is somebody who is a boatsman, or maybe they never owned a boat and hoped one, and one day, hoped to one day own a boat. Uh, they might be buried in a in the boat motor. Uh, interesting enough, there's a Mercedes Benz and an, an a KLM airplane. As we all know, uh, those are um, 
distinctly representative of the European countries um, because of the European influence on Africa. Um, the Mercedes-Benz actually got on, went on tour uh, on a larger exhibition uh, through African Eyes that was featured in the Detroit Institute of Art and the uh, Kansas City Museum. Uh, so those, those are also featured here. Uh, so very fascinating coffins and when you come and visit the National Museum of Funeral History, it would be interesting to see what kind of coffin you would like to be representative of you. Okay, Lucy. This is one of our funner exhibits here at the National Museum of Funeral History, and we're actually coming up on the holiday. This is the Day of the Dead, the Dia de los Muertos, and being here in Texas, uh, we're very, very close uh, to Mexico, uh, uh, one of the Latin American countries that celebrates this amazing holiday. And then what this holiday is all about is remembering their ancestors, remembering the people who have passed on before them, coming together for a celebration uh, of who they were to them in life and never forgetting that, that who they were, but also remembering that we all too will die one day. There's fun little things that you will you will see in the altars, uh, some uh, interesting um, symbolic pieces that help remind us all that we all will die. It's, it's just part of life, you know? The altars actually feature items that the their loved ones enjoyed during life. So if they're welcoming a child home, they might have toys on the altar or some coloring books or paint uh, for the child to enjoy uh, upon their return and their visit. Uh, if it was your great grandfather uh, and he loved smoking cigars or having a great whiskey, then they would bring out the cigars and whiskey for him and actually place them on the altar. Uh, so the sugar skulls that you see featured on the altar, uh, those are representative of the fact that, uh, that you cheated death for another year. Uh, sometimes they'll take the sugar skulls and they'll write uh, 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 the person's name on it. And then they'll give the sugar skull um, with a little poem that says, uh, oh, well, you were so busy promoting the National Museum of Funeral History this year. The La Katrina said, it's not your time yet. You still have work to do. Uh, whatever you did in life or whatever your year was full of, sometimes that will play out in the little poem that somebody will give you along with your sugar skull to remind you to be thankful of the year that you had and that hope that you will be able to cheat death for another year. There's a lot of fun things. We have a beautiful cemetery. The cemetery scene is very educational in helping people to realize that the cemetery is a place not only for rest, but a place for celebration. So during the Day of the Dead holiday, they will all come together. They'll help clean up the cemetery. Uh, they will actually purchase the Sepasuche flowers, which is very, very similar to the marigold. And we all know marigolds have a very distinct smell. And they believe that the smell, the scent of the marigold will help bring that spirit home uh, to visit with the family and enjoy the feast that the family prepares for them. So food is also a very big uh, part of the Day of the Dead celebration because they want the soul to be able to, to um, eat uh, and, and quest their hunger as well as they give them water so they can quest their thirst for their journey back to their resting place for another year. So they will go and uh, visit the cemetery and and also at night they will burn candles because they believe that the illumination of the candles will guide their spirits back to their resting place for another year. So it's a very, very, very fascinating holiday and it has so many interesting traditions. Through our exhibit, you are able to explore those amazing cultural rituals and customs um, from the Latin American countries. This fabulous museum has been here since 1992, and it's here to tell the story of not only our industry, but the stories of many people who have, who have passed before us and the tradition of the funerals and the custom and rituals behind them. 
We look forward to sharing our museum with you. Please visit our website at www.nmfh.org to learn more about the museum and get a glimpse of these exhibits. Also, you can like us on Facebook and you can check out our fascinating store to buy that unique gift for somebody who has everything. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Well, um, I know uh, Jen is going to make her way um, over to the to the gift shop here. Um, and while we do that, uh, let me just introduce myself, Tammy Wallace. I think most everybody on the call knows me, but I am the co-founder and president and CEO of the Greater Houston LGBT Chamber of Commerce. We are absolutely thrilled to have everybody here. And um, you have just seen uh, two exhibits out of this fabulous museum. We are so proud to have the National Museum of Funeral History as one of our chamber members, and particularly as part of our Arts Plus Business Initiative, that intersection of arts and business that is so crucial to the economy of our city, our region, and our state. The, the, Arts are in so important in terms of being seen as an international city. And uh, the museum is one of many museums, of course, that we have here in our great city. But as Genevieve said, we really need to make sure this is not the best kept secret. Truly an experience to, uh, to go to the museum. So if you haven't been, we wanna encourage you to visit. And there's actually, uh, if you look on our website for our members, uh, you have an opportunity, there's a member benefit. You can check that out as well. Um, and that's a, as part of our partnership with the museum. So um, I wanna just share, we're gonna have some door prizes coming up um, and there's gonna be two free admissions with the door prizes from the Museum of Funeral History. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so Genevieve is gonna walk us through uh, the gift shop. And this is not just any gift shop. This is, this is probably the best gift shop I've ever seen with the most unique gifts. So one thing I heard on Good Morning America uh, earlier this week was get your holiday shopping done early. You wanna get it shipped and get it taken care of because there's gonna be a huge shortage in terms of just enough UPS, FedEx, et cetera, to get things done. This is a great way to support a local museum. These gifts are wonderful and will make fabulous holiday gifts coming up, birthday, et cetera. So um, with that, um, I, don't wanna, I wanna remind everybody, uh, for those of you that are wearing masks, there may only be one, so this may be easy, but, um, Show us those masks because we'll be walking through some uh, the, the gift for the mask contest as well. So with that, Jen, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. So All I'm going right. to I'm going to flip the camera and give the camera over to our fabulous uh, camera person, Lucy. So um, let me quickly just uh, flip this here and see. This is Lucy. Lucy, say hi to everybody. Hi. Lucy's been working hard getting everything together for the gift shop and putting together the fabulous gift baskets and then all of the items that I'm going to quickly feature that are in the gift basket, uh, uh, the items that are in the gift basket. So I'm going to hand the camera over to the pro. So, um, uh, so we're going to start with some of the gift baskets. So we have these awesome uh, cooking basket because remember I, we talked about how food is a big part of funerals. It's important that we nourish ourselves in time of grief. And so we have this wonderful basket together. We have our Food to Die For cookbook. Uh, we have two free admission tickets. We have a wonderful kitchen towel, Bon Appetit. We have some skull salt and pepper shakers. Uh, we also are gonna give you a, a fun mask for the COVID times. And then we have a cremation apron. Uh, the uh, cremator is what it's called. So when you're barbecuing and trying to cremate that meat, you can be official now. So that's our first door prize. Our second door prize, and we're gonna show some of the items again. 
is our any day above ground is a good one. Uh, that is actually our, our slogan here at the National Museum of Funeral History. So we have some fun items to go with it. We have a koozie for your undertaker water. Uh, we have a coffee cup, any day above ground is a good one. And we have the museum's logo on the back. You also get two free admissions to the museum. We get a fun mask again to commemorate, commemorate our COVID times. You get the undertaker's root beer. We get to talk about Dr. Thomas Holmes, but he was part of the trivia. Dr. Thomas Holmes was a chemist and he actually manufactured root beer and sold it in the back of his pharmacy back when they had the root beer um, stations and, and soda stations in the pharmacy. So we have root beer for him in honor of him. Really good root beer. If you do get root beer, we recommend you drink it cold with no ice. And then we have this awesome casket business card holder. What an awesome thing to have on your desk, right? To hold your business cards. And you don't have to be in the industry. And then we've got, of course, our Any Day Above Ground t-shirt that we're gonna show you the back of up here. So right there, right there this way. Oh, sorry, Lucy's got it all set up and I'm trying to mess up her display. So uh, here's the back of the t-shirt. Any Day Above Ground is a good one. The National Museum of Funeral History. We have this one in red and in gray and it has the funeral hearse. This is actually one of our original logos here at the National Museum of Funeral History. And we didn't want to, you know, completely put it to rest. So we still put it on our t-shirts along with them. The right one has the same one on it. Yeah, it has the same logo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we talked about our, the koozie. We talked about the card holder. We have like these really fun kitchen towels like we were talking about. We have a whole selection of kitchen towels. Our kitchen towels aren't on our uh, website. So if there's something that you see here and you don't see it on our website, just send us a, a Facebook message and we check our Facebook often because of our Facebook Live. Um, so like I said, if you see something here that's not on the website, just reach out to us. You can give us a phone call, uh, Facebook message us, um, uh, send us an email on contact and we'll definitely take care of your order. Uh, we, with this virtual world, we really have learned how to expedite orders and communicate with people in different ways uh, to help fulfill them. Um, so then I'll talk about the books. We have some really awesome books here. And these are the ones I pulled from our, uh, from our collection of books, a graveyard journal. And it basically just allows you if, you, if you love going and visiting cemeteries, you can write down the cemetery name and take notes of the things that you saw there. Uh, sometimes people just have very interesting niches of things to do. Understanding the cemetery symbols that are actually on the gravestones. And then we have, of course, Six Feet Under Texas. Uh, and this is a unique, famous headstone gravestones in the Low Star State. So this is a really good trio, perhaps for somebody uh, who really enjoys doing cemetery tours. Uh, they can learn where they are in Texas, learn about the symbols and then journal uh, about their visit. And then of course we have some other uh, cemetery books, stones, uh, stories in stone stories in stone from Paris and then stories in stone from New York. Uh, so really neat books if you guys happen to plan to visit any cities hopefully in the future when we get to travel again. Um, but we just have a lot of fun stuff. Uh, this is one of our tumblers here. Uh, you know it's always good to keep your beverages hot and cold uh, and Dead Above Ground is a good one with our museum logo. Uh, every, every, all the gift shop proceeds help to support the museum and then we have a lot of fun flasks. Uh, the fun, the flasks come with a little funnel. I don't have it in my hand, but uh, so that you can put stuff in it if you so desire. Uh, we have fun saving sayings. This one has the National Museum of Funeral History. We have one that says a sip a day keeps the embalmer away. We have one that says homemade embalming fluid. And then of course, any day above ground is a good one because that's our slogan. So I'll show you a little bit about the, uh, the gift baskets that we have for the, cost, uh, the mask contest. Our first one here is a fun skull with a flask, two admission tickets, one of our, one of our uh, coffin pins and a mask. The second one, you're gonna get a six feet under Texas book, two admission tickets and a USB drive. We have these fun USB drives. Uh, they're, they come in a casket style. And this one is an eight gig. And Lucy's walking away because she's gonna grab the urn one. Grab me the urn one, the urn USB. <laughs> and then we also- It doesn't have a little chain. We have the USB in an urn style. 
So, um, and this one has a chain where the USB just pops right out. This is a 16 gig. So if you want something clever to store your stuff and you don't want to forget where you stored it, these are really cute gifts, uh, great stocking stuffers uh, for your um, for your family, for your friends. Um, back again to this, this again is one of the prizes, a six feet under book with a USB drive and a, a sports mask for the day, uh, for, to commemorate COVID once again. And then our third one here, if we do end up with three prizes, of course, you're going to have Dead Fred. Dead yeah, Fred he is, fell down in is he fell down in the bag, but Dead Fred is a fun pen holder. You can just put him on your desk and he'll hold your pen for you. Uh, and then you'll also get in dog years, I'm dead cap here. A black in dog years, I'm dead. Cause you know, we're all dead now in dog years. Just some clever sayings. And then you'll also get two free admissions and then you're gonna get one of our sugar skull masks with our museum logo on it. So uh, Lucy can give you a quick tour of the, of the gift shop real quick on the phone. Just kind of walk you through a little bit because we have a lot of stuff here. Uh, we are open seven days a week. We do take the necessary precautions with the CDC so that we stay safe. We have hand sanitizers. We have a lot of space so we can social distance. And we hope that you guys are able to visit the museum soon. We're really happy to start being back in business. We have some really nice jewelry, nice gifts, great handbags. Just really eclectic stuff for that person that uh, has everything. Oh, let me do the Frida process. How much time do we still have, Tammy? I'm not sure, I don't wanna run us over. Um, Maureen, you, are you tracking time there? We still have um, about nine minutes or so if you want to continue. Okay, great. Uh, so Frida handbags are a very popular handbag. Um, I have a couple of friends who have these beautiful purses and they get so many compliments. I actually took this handbag to New York with me one, uh, one of my trips back in last year and I got so many compliments on it. Um, they're very, um, they're very special type handbags um, that you can't just get anywhere. And we have them here featured at the National Museum of Funeral History. And of course we have some wonderful embroidered masks from Mexico that we got. We get a lot of compliments on these as well. Some great ones here. We have the Houston Astros and the Houston Texans for those of you that are sport, oh, here it is, sporting our teams. And then we have some great table runners for the holiday season. Uh, I know Halloween is just around the corner, uh, and you also have the Day of the Dead, but if not, you can get ready for next year. Let me do this one here. And this is our Any Day Above Ground line. We have some really clever things from keychains to um, koozies, um, over the hill, what hill, if you're doing any 50-year-old birthdays or beyond. Uh, we have really clever gifts to create over the hill uh, gift bags, gift items. There's a lot of wittiness and cleverness. You just have to come in with your imagination and let it run wild in the gift shop. Okay. And then, and of course we have a lot of Day of the Dead stuff. We have our crosses as the holiday season starts to um, come upon us. We have our wonderful Merry Christmas from Heaven. Uh, Merry Christmas from Heaven ornaments. And the saying is on the Christmas ornament is, I love you all dearly. Now don't shed a tear. I'm spending my Christmas with Jesus this year. Merry Christmas from heaven. If somebody lost somebody this year, this would be a wonderful uh, gift to give somebody. If it's a loved one or a pet, uh, be a nice gift to give. And we have the wind chimes and the different types of ornaments for the Christmas tree this year. We also have a locket here. Uh, where you can actually put the picture of a loved one in there. And then we have beautiful poems as well to give as wonderful gifts. We have one of these clinging crosses are really neat gifts here. If you know somebody who might be in hospice or palliative care uh, and you know that they're terminally ill, you can ask the funeral director to take the clinging cross and place it in their hand as they're preparing the deceased. And then when they're done, um, caring for their loved one, then they will give the clinging cross back to the family. 
and know that, that your loved one was holding this in their hand uh, as they were being prepared for their burial. Uh, the, a lot of the funeral homes use these uh, for just that. Um, or, or, or family members will ask, uh, give it to the hand of their dying loved one or their terminally ill loved one uh, during their final hours and just have them hold it. And then that becomes uh, a very memorable gift to the family. Something tangible to hold on, bring you some comfort. And Jen, uh, I just want, yeah, I just want, I wanted to mention to everyone, anyone attending this event will get 25% off their purchase. Uh, make sure everybody saw that in the chat uh, okay. using the code uh, O C T B I Z. So, yes. And if you do, uh, if you do process an order on the website, we haven't been able to get that code locked in uh, on the website uh, gift shop site. So if you do, just please put a note in there with the code so that when we go to ring it up, uh, we are able to give you a credit back for your 25%. No, I think maybe when you put- Hold on, Lucy, oh, Lucy's the expert. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. just make sure in the notes you put the code and we will, we will uh, give you a credit for your 25%. If you pay by credit card on the website and the credit doesn't go through, we will refund you your credit of 25% off. Or they can just call the museum or order through contact. Yes. Yeah. But make sure you mention the code so, we, so that we know that you get the 25% off. Let's see someone come in. So we just hey, have a lot of fun Can we see the furry stuff. bones? Huh? Can we see furry bones? Furry bones. Furry yes. bones. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you for uh, asking us about the furry bones. It's because they're hiding behind the, the, the display tables. We have this really fun collection of furry bones. When furry bones first started out by the company that we order them from, there's only like five or seven. And I think now there's over a hundred different furry bones and they're all different animals. Uh, some of them are vegetables. Um, some of them are, um, you know, fantasy type animals and they're just a lot of fun. So if you have somebody that collects is, you know, collects items, this is a wonderful collectible or if you just have a birthday or a, need a stocking stuffer and somebody likes um, birds or they like flowers or they like sea creatures, uh, the furry bones are an awesome, awesome gift to give. Um, and they're not that bad. They're only $8.99, a furry bone, and then you get your 25% discount. So, and when these are the cute Halloween ones, let me show you the Halloween ones. We've got Dracula here. Can we go back to it? Here we forget here. We have a cute Count, Count Dracula for Halloween. He's a really adorable. And then we have the mummy. And then for Thanksgiving, we have the turkey. That would be so fun to put him on the, on the, on the Thanksgiving table. We get a lot of conversations. Are you hey, hey. hey, Jen, we, Jen, yeah. we got a question. Uh, somebody asked, was that a coffin wine holder? Oh yes, yes. This is a coffin wine holder. <laughs> it's, it's a. It's called. It's called Fabulous. a wine casket. It's our wine <laughs> casket. Yes, they're very well done. They they yeah. are a little pricey. They're a hundred dollars, but they're very well done. Just like a royal casket. A great gift with that twenty five percent discount. Exactly. So yes, they come in two different colors, as you can see. We have the, the natural wood or the mahogany looking wood. Yes, I know there's gonna, there's so much stuff to see in this gift shop. It's hard yeah. to, to capture it all as you can see, uh, but we have a lot of fun stuff. So, but yeah, and not, all of, and not all of the furry bones may be on the website. So if you saw a furry bone uh, in this segment and you want to um, give the phone back to Lucy cause she's the expert. Uh, if you see a furry bone uh, on the on this segment, but you don't see it on the website, just write down a description. Actually, I think all of them are on the website right now. Oh, Lucy says oh, yes. they're all on the website. Yes, they are. Yeah, Lucy. Lucy knows. <laughs> Lucy knows everything. This is her. This is her forte. <laughs> the gift shop is her domain. <laughs> so and Jen, so yeah. Jen, Jen, yeah. remind us, remind everybody again the different options how uh, how to purchase. Yes, so if you want to purchase something from the gift shop, you can go online to our gift shop at www.nmfh.org. 
Uh, if you go online to purchase, the coupon code will not work on the online. Just make an annotation into the notes section. Uh, make some type of comment that you're with the LGBT, put in your code, uh, O-C-T-B-I-Z, October Biz, but abbreviating October. You can uh, send us an email on contact at nmfh.org, or you can call us directly on our, at our 281-876-3063. Um, or you can like us on Facebook and send us an instant messenger or a message on Facebook and you can order through there. We do Facebook lives um, about every other week. Uh, if you go online, you can see our Facebook live. We have one, I believe, coming up on the third of, uh, no, what, next week we have one. Next Thursday. week we have one coming up. So, um, uh, and that's another opportunity for you to see more items for the gift shop. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. Any last parting parting items there? Uh, well, let's see. Just showing you some of the uh, some of the Day of the Dead items that we have here. Those are tea light holders, and of course the casket business card holders. You can see there. Can you get in there, Lucy? Yep. And we have different colors on those. We have silver, gold, uh, kind of like a copper, and then black. So, yes. So um, I guess we'll figure out who will be the winners of our amazing gift baskets. You want to show the gift baskets one more time? Uh, this, are all, this is our gift collection for y'all. Excited to see who the winners are. All right. And I know that there's some um, questions on chat, Tammy, that I hadn't had a chance to answer yet. Uh, so um, do um, I answer them later or do you want me to answer them verbally? Uh. Uh, well, I tell you what, while we do the uh, trivia questions, uh, if anybody has any questions that didn't get answered, if you'll uh, populate those in the chat for us, then we'll sure. read those out for you. So Great. Um, so with that, let's, uh, let's move over. If you'll just hold for us, Jen, and then uh, Maureen uh, out for any questions we've got coming up here. Um, okay. All right. So let's yeah, look at this. This Time trivia questions and the mass contest here. Um, okay, Maureen. Okay, so uh, if you've won a door prize in the last 30 days, you're not eligible. Uh, we do want to give everybody a chance. So the first person to respond in the chat box is going to be the winner of these. We've got various gift baskets, as Genevieve mentioned. And so put that response in the chat box again. No Googling, no Googling. Uh, this should be pretty easy with the uh, virtual tour. We've got some great questions here. So let's put up our first question. Also, our judges are looking at the mask. So I think we've got a couple of people wearing those. Um, Maureen, let's go with the first question. Yep. Oh. Who do we got here? Uh, it's Stephanie Grossman. That was very cool. All right, Stephanie. She knew the, <laughs> she knew the answer. <laughs> there you go. All right, Stephanie, congratulations. Congratulations on that. Yeah. And we'll, uh, Maureen, I'll follow up with you and, on coordinating. Okay. Our second question has to do, uh, focused on the International Hall Day of the Dead. Here we go. Yep. This one's, does this one have everybody stumped? Christina got it. You got it? Oh, I didn't see it. All right, Christina, congratulations. Yep, very good. All right. And then our mass contest um so uh what, what are we seeing here from our judges y'all want to take yourselves off mute i know we've got do we have shanice i think that's got a mask on and did i see cheryl does she have one on too that mask counts cheryl and stephanie and shan and lane and i can't see ashton's he's looking down ah ah very oh, good uh, Got 
Oh, look at Stephanie. Oh yeah. my gosh. Dalton. I, and Dalton. I have to say, I love Stephanie's mask. Yeah. Okay. I, I love I'm all of the them. Princess but... vibe from Stephanie. <laughs> okay. And what about Dalton? Wait, where's Dalton? Dalton? Oh, look at him. He's got some. That's awesome. Love it. So do, are, are we hearing some consensus here with Stephanie? i tell you what we could, we could do too. We've got uh, Stephanie and Dalton. Stephanie and Dalton, because Dalton scared the wee out of me for it. Not literally, but <laughs> that was scary. So, so each of the judges. <gasps> Cheryl made her own mask. Holy cow. Let's see, where's Cheryl at? This is great. It's hand embroidered. Oh. oh, that is, no, oh, really made it. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. Y'all, and I already won a prize. So realistically, if you want to give to someone else, although I appreciate the support of Princess Style, I completely understand. I'm okay, you are winning so, prizes. You are so kind. Minded. You are so kind, Stephanie. So I tell you what, let's do this. Dalton, uh, Cheryl, total A for effort here. That is amazing. And then because I just love, uh, Sham's got, uh, she's rocking uh, for LGBTQ History Month too here. So well, I think we, we go, we'll do those three. I uh, agree with the three. That's awesome. All yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. Totally on board with that. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Uh, and look, these are, uh, these are some fantastic, you are going to love these baskets. And thank you to the museum for putting them together. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, before I start into uh, our final comments, Jen, uh, do you want to just say any parting words? She's still connected with us. Were you asking me? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to oh. just say any final words? Before? <laughs> okay, I couldn't. I couldn't hear if you said Jen or Jim. I apologize. <laughs> so I was looking for Jim real quick, but uh, yeah. So. Thank you guys for, for inviting the National Museum of Funeral History. Uh, we really, really look forward to next year and having all of our October events. We usually have our Halloween car show. We have our haunted house. We have our big day of the dead celebration. So we hope that you guys will be able to join us for those, for those amazing festivities. But in the meantime, the National Museum of Funeral History is here. We're open seven days a week, except for specific holidays, and that's posted on our website. Um, and um, we're actually going to be opening a, a jazz funeral exhibit in a couple of weeks. And Icons and Ash will be going down. Um, that's a temporary exhibit uh, from an artist, Haida Hatchery. So if you haven't had a chance to see that amazing exhibit, it will be going down next week. So you might want to make a trip over here this weekend to check it out before it goes down. So, but thank you guys for all your support to the museum. I love you guys all dearly. Uh, love being a member of the chamber and uh, look forward to hopefully next October we get to do this again. Thanks, Jen. We really, Thanks. really appreciate it. And before I jump into my concluding remarks, I think everybody knows Robert Hahn, but you typically know him in his role as uh, with, with our corporate partner, several level corporate partner, Amogee Bank. But Robert, tell us really quickly what you do with the museum. I think that I love this. Oh my gosh. Um, so many things. I love the museum. I've been part of the museum for, for many years now. Um, I, I actually was a former funeral director and um, actually sent a lot of items to the museum as well. But uh, I do docent work. I, I do some exhibits there. Uh, really almost anything there. I, I, I've done some presentations, all, all sorts of things. So um, please, you know, let us know. And, and if you need a docent when you're there, uh, let us know and we can arrange that for you, whatever we need. But I'm so happy to be part of the museum and part of the chamber as well. So thank you all. And if Thanks, I could chime in really quick, Robert, yeah, thank please. you for all you do, Robert. You are an amazing volunteer here at the National Museum of Federal History. And I bow down to Robert with his creativity. <laughs> and next year, when you go to the haunted house, he always has his hand in making that a spectacular haunted house with us. And if you ever go to one of the Civil War reenactments, you've got to come check us out because Robert is all dressed as Dr. Thomas Holmes, who you learned about today as the father oh. of American embalming. And he is teaching you the embalming process. So Robert is amazing and I couldn't be this successful without him. So thank you, Robert. Ah, oh, wonderful. Well, thank you both. And Genevieve, thank you for this fabulous tour. 
Uh, we just couldn't be more proud to have the museum as one of our chamber members. And thank you for making this a special evening and making this work virtually. We absolutely, absolutely love that and love highlighting the work that the museum is doing. Uh, I want to give a special shout out again to Lisa Howell, who's joining us, one of our colleagues from the North Texas LGBTQ Chamber. Thank you, Lisa for being here. We appreciate everybody being here and participating in this special evening. Don't forget that 25% discount. Uh, you wanna take advantage of that. Again, holiday gifts, get something for yourself. Um, with that, before we uh, end this, I wanna just share a couple of things. We've got some great upcoming events. Um, November the 11th, we've got uh, our special edition, Brewing Up Business. We are going to be honoring our veterans. That's going to be with Combined Arms that focuses on uh, serving our veterans, specifically our LGBTQ veterans as well. And then this is sponsored by Amogee Bank. So this is going to be a special morning. We're also going to be honoring our members that are veterans. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if any of you are veterans and you're one of our members, please let us know. We want to get a photo. And we're going to highlight you and your business and uh, show our gratitude for your service to our country. On November 12th, we're going to have another Pride Across Texas event. This is going to be great, connecting the LGBTQ business community across the state uh, with our colleagues in Austin, San Antonio, and North Texas. So if you haven't registered for that, please do. December 2nd, we're going to have our member orientation. Uh, and this is not for just new members, but if you want to just learn how to maximize your benefits uh, in the chamber, that's exactly what this orientation is going to be uh, for. And something that you're hearing for the very first time tonight, we are going to do a chamber food drive on December the 4th with our wonderful anchor sponsor, Signature Care ER Montrose. As you know, I think most of you know, actually, Signature Care is one of our incredible corporate partners. We can't have a holiday party this year. So we are going to give back and help raise food and funds for the Montrose Center uh, to support LGBTQ seniors, to help fill those holiday baskets because our LGBTQ seniors need us more than ever this year. So it is going to be wonderful. You can drive through and drop off your food and it is a wonderful collaboration. The Montrose Center is one of our nonprofit members. Again, like the museum, we love lifting up our nonprofit members and highlighting their mission and their impact in our community. So you're gonna be hearing more about that. We'll have sponsorship opportunities, as well as if you can't drive down and drop off, um, there's gonna be a virtual food drive, food drive that you can donate online as well. So keep an eye out. We will be announcing that very soon. Well, with that, Maureen, put us on the happy Halloween slide. I want to wish everyone a happy Halloween on behalf of the board. We hope you have a wonderful and safe weekend. We're thinking about everybody. I know these virtual events are not quite like being in person, but I hope you've had a really fun time tonight. And thank you for your support of the museum. It's a great opportunity. You can do this socially distant. The, the museum is huge. So put that on your calendar if you just need to get out of the house and want to do it in a very safe way. With that, thank you everyone for joining us. Maureen, Jenna, thank you for all your support with tech support. We appreciate you. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Jen.